Right, so recently I got myself the Pixel 6a for £200. It's a fantastic device for the price, and it got me wondering, you can't get these kind of deals for brand new iPhones on the iOS side. And so should you consider refurbished iPhones for around the same price, or should you just buy a new Android device? Well, let's delve into the pros and cons of each device. Right, so I chose a 10R for this comparison because this phone can easily be found for under £300 or dollars, and this does have the best bang for your buck in terms of refurbished iPhones because, yes, the SE2 can be found for a similar price, but that has an archaic design compared to this, and so this device I thought would be a better comparison against a 6A, which of course is hailed as the iPhone of the Android world, so that's why I chose these devices. But don't worry guys, my comparison's gonna be more general. So let's begin with the pros of the Android device, and that begins with the modern design, because yes, as one expects, this being a device from 2022 does have a more modern design compared to the iPhone XR that launched, back in 2018. So yeah, this being a near five-year-old device means you have a notch and super thick bezels, whereas that's not the case with the Pixel 6a on the front. It has a hole punch, thinner bezels, and it looks like most regular flagships. And talking about the front, the next big advantage is the display, because yes, for this kind of price, you're not gonna be getting an OLED iPhone. Those have not fallen down in price just yet. And so the best you're getting is an 828p LCD panel that of course is decent, but pales in comparison to the much better OLEDs that are higher resolution, have deeper blacks, and overall are just better compared to the 10R. And do remember, one of the weaknesses with the 6A is actually the display, because it lacks 120Hz, which many budget Android devices have. For example, the Redmi Note 10 Pro I bought a year ago does have 120Hz. In fact, it also has a brighter panel on the front. So yes, if you care about the display on your phone, Android is the way to go. Next, let's talk about the cool features because obviously iPhones don't have as many fancy features as Androids, and that's especially the case when the device is nearly five years old. This lacks an ultra-wide, this lacks night mode, this lacks an always-on display, and you have all of that with the 6A. Also, you have core screening on this, that's pretty convenient for spam calls, and you can also remove things in pictures, which is a pretty neat feature on this, also, you have the way superior Google Assistant. So yes, if you're looking for a more feature-rich, fun experience with your phone, then Android is the way to go because these phones have many features that today's flagships have, and old iPhones simply lack these. Now, the next thing I want to delve into is battery life because these being refurbished devices means the batteries aren't brand new in these. Yes, you can get lucky and get a properly refurbished device that has a new battery inside, but if you're going for a cheap refurbished device like this, that's really not going to be the case. You're usually getting a battery health of around 90%, and so the 10 does perform pretty poorly when it comes to battery life, especially when compared to new Android devices. Since remember, a lot of budget devices have chips that focus on efficiency, so as a result, battery life on these phones are fantastic. That's been the case with the 6A and the Redmi 10 Pro I've used and you don't get that with older iPhones, especially buying refurbished. And finally, let's talk about storage because this has 128 gigs of storage as standards, which Apple actually still doesn't offer with the SE3. So of course, for many refurbished iPhones, they're still gonna be starting with 64 gigs. And the 6A actually does not have expandable storage, but many other Android devices do offer this, whereas iPhones never had this. So if you do care about storage, Android is the way to go. Oh, actually, nearly forgot to mention this, because personally, I don't care about this, but I know others might do, and that, of course, is 5G support. That's a big thing now. 5G's rolling out to many countries, and you're not gonna be able to get 5G on most cheap refurbished iPhones at the 10R, because we only got 5G iPhones with the iPhone 12 series, and so you might have to wait a few years till they drop down in price if you want 5G support. So right now it does seem like Android's winning by a huge mile, but now let's delve into the advantages of getting a refurbished iPhone, and that begins with the build quality. So obviously the 10R was a much more expensive device at launch, and so as a result, it feels very premium in the hand. Yes, the design looks older, but the glass and aluminium shell does feel much better in the hand, especially compared to the plastic back the 6A and many other Android devices at this price point have. 
And that's not the only difference because haptics, speakers, the mics, wireless charging, which many Android phones lack, these smaller components feel much better on the iPhone because of course, this was a more expensive device. And so yes, overall the iPhone does still use premiumness that these budget Android devices do not have. The next thing is the camera. Now yes, I know the 6A has pretty good cameras, and for still photography, that's definitely the case. The 6A does impress. But overall, guys, the iPhone's camera is better because comparing the iPhone to other budget Android devices, the iPhone blows the competition out of the water. But also remember, video is much better on the iPhone. So if you care about that, the iPhone is the way to go. Also, I did notice some lag when taking photos on the 6A and, of course, the Redmi Note 10 Pro I have. And that's not the case with the iPhone. It's still super speedy and fluid. And so yes, when it comes to the overall camera experience, the iPhone's still better. And remember that a lot of apps like Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, they work better with the iPhone cameras, whereas that's not the case with budget Android devices. And so yes, basically if you care about cameras, iPhone is the way to go. And regarding apps being better optimized for the camera on the iPhone, that's actually the case with apps in general because I often run into issues on both Reddit and Twitter for Android, and that's just not the case with iOS. And it makes sense because these developers have much less iPhones to optimize for compared to, of course, the plethora of budget Android devices with various specs. And so overall, the iPhone does have better app support. The apps are generally better on this. And continuing with software, the third point I wanna mention is software support. The great thing about iPhones is that they're supported for years and years. And so you can still buy this 10R in 2023 and expect at least two years of support, which actually matches a 6A because this should get Android 15. It currently runs Android 13. And so yeah, it's kind of shameful for Androids. A 2018 iPhone still has better support. And yes, I know the 6A should get security updates till 2027, but remember the iOS powered iPhone 5S recently got a security update. And so eventually when the 10R does lose support, you should still get security updates on a semi-regular basis. And remember the 6A is actually one of the better phones when it comes to support. If you buy a Xiaomi device, for example, you're lucky to get one year of support. And so yeah, software wise, the iPhone again has a big win. So let's talk about the performance because yes, I know this is an old device, but the A12 in this actually isn't far behind the Tensor G1, which of course was Google's flagship chip from 2021. So as a result, when it comes to data use, these phones are very similar. And remember the 6 is pretty much the only budget Android device that has a flagship chip. Generally, you're gonna find less powerful chips. And so if you care about performance and especially gaming performance because apps are generally more optimized on iOS, then the iPhone is the way to go. And remember once again, if you want the A13 chip, you can pay slightly more for the iPhone 11 or of course settle for the SC2 instead. And that offers even better performance. So yeah, again, the iPhone does have a big win in this category. And finally, let's touch on biometrics. So the 6A and also many other budget devices have fingerprint scanners either on the side of the device or inside the display and generally they're not that great. Of course they can't use the flagship ultrasonic tech so most of them have the inferior optical scanners and they do have their cons. For example the speeds is not that great. If you wash your hands for example and your fingers are wet the fingerprint scanner won't work and on the whole face ID works a lot better because it never fails, it's very seamless, you can wear glasses and it still works. Yes it might not work with the mask but that was a bigger issue during COVID. And so on the whole, Face ID is way better. Now, of course, I do understand that apart from the 6A, we do have 2D face unlock on most Android devices. But remember, those are not as secure as Face ID that, of course, uses 3D tech. And actually, the fingerprint scanner themselves are less secure. So if you care about security, then Face ID is the way to go. And that's another reason to get the iPhone. Also, if you already have many Apple devices, you get access to the Apple ecosystem, which is way superior to other ecosystems. You get things like iMessage, AirDrop, automatic pairing to AirPods, Handoff. So those are pretty nice. So I think that's about it. 
Though there are a few things I forgot to mention earlier, for example, the Android device generally does have faster wire charging, however, the iPhone does have wireless charging, which many budget Android devices do not have. And apart from software support, general support for iPhones is a lot better because if you want to try and get something replaced or fixed, you can easily do that with an iPhone because there's tons of Apple stores and Apple's customer service in general is very good. Whereas that's not the case for Android manufacturers, especially for budget devices. If you need repair for these, it might be hard to get legit support. But overall guys, it kind of depends on what you prioritize. But generally, I would recommend people get the iPhone because I do find it a more reliable experience, especially for holding on to it for many years. Yes, I know iOS 16 has not been that great, but generally I do find iPhones age better than Android devices, especially budget ones, and so you should definitely consider refurbished iPhones. And of course, remember that buying a refurbished device does help the planet. So yes, I do think the iPhone does edge it out in this instance, but I won't completely dismiss the 6A because I have enjoyed using this and of course it being new does mean generally the condition is better with this compared to refurbished devices. Anyways that's about it for my thoughts guys but tell me in the comments which would you go for. Anyways thank you for watching guys and make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours and on that note I'll see you guys in the next one.